What's going on, everyone? Happy Monday. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, flu test, RSV, or maybe it was norovirus, I hope you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues and no long-term issues from any of those other viruses. It is time now for the Monday edition of the Virus Update for Monday, January 6, 2025. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily virus update as needed on all those viruses that are making people sick. And yes, animals too, because H5N1, it's a thing. And well, there's other viruses out there that can make animals sick as well. And you need to be informed with what's going on with each and every one of these viruses. So that's what I do here on my channel. Want to stay informed? Subscribe down below. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, and leave your comments down below. The more people that hit that like button, the more YouTube is going to push this content throughout the algorithm. Let's try for 150 to 200 like button hits today. Alrighty, only just a few news stories to take a look at today. Then we're going to take a look at some of our daily data. Uh, Walgreens updated. There is some uh, mixed news on that. Mostly good. But a few places still bad. Then we're going to take a look at some wastewater, and we'll end the day on New York State. So I think this is going to be somewhere between a 15 to 20 minute video today. Not a terribly busy news day, and hopefully we are starting to come to the backside of things now. Because if you've been watching my channel, the last two weeks, news has been really busy, which is why we have been just every day. And once things finally do slow down, maybe within a few weeks from now, We'll go back to uh, skipping a few days on these updates, unless it is a busy news period, and then, of course, we will continue every day. Alrighty, i got to read this first story to you. Not so much the story. Read the headline. Is this what we're calling it now? Sneezing season. COVID-19, flu, RSV spreading, but other respiratory illnesses out and about also. Sneezing season. That's a new one. Sometimes they call it sniffling season, illness season. Oh, it's sickness season. Well, now it's being called sneezing season. Wintertime illnesses are spreading throughout the state. This is in Virginia. And in Southside, Virginia, sending more people to the hospitals. But officials say it is normal for this time of year. It is normal. It wasn't normal for COVID until 2020 because the COVID wasn't a thing before then. But get this, across the Commonwealth, meaning Virginia, confirmed cases of COVID-19 are up 29%. According to Virginia Department of Health, positive tests for flu are up 49%, so flu is going up, and RSV has increased by 21%. Pneumonia is also an issue, so yes, there are several different things going on in Virginia at this time. In North Carolina, five flu deaths have now been recorded in a single week, most uh, of current season, and this was for the week ending on Saturday December 28th. In Quebec, it is measles that is the issue. Four new cases of measles in Quebec after a contagious person traveled to Canada. And everything, all these news stories, will get uh, posted in a small thread on my site so you can read the full stories. We often don't read full stories while doing the video because, well, if I read to you every story that I shared, uh, my videos would be well north of a half hour. No one wants to sit through a half-hour video. Taking a look at Canada, and we will see that the respiratory levels, the viral activity levels, COVID is moderate. Let's refresh this just to be sure this is up to date. Yep, COVID is moderate. Flu A is high. Flu B is low. And RSV is still coming in at high at this time. So that's flu A and RSV still coming up as high in Canada for this time. Over on my website, not much to show you for today. Uh, I have made a few tweaks to the COVID positive archive. Um, I've been slowly adding more of those uh, date stamps into the titles of COVID positive. And I did find that uh, U.S. Representative Judy Chu, I did not have this in my uh, archive previously. I had her case in there, but it turned out when I was trying to uh, fix this because the uh, source was missing, I found that, hey, she had another case. So she's actually twice positive now. Uh, May 18th, 2022, she had a case for of COVID. And really not much else to uh, 
show you just a reminder that we do have several tracking threads going. We do have the bird flu one for U.S. and international. We have U.S. sports, international sports, and we do have the list of performers, which so far just only one entry in there. I haven't seen any others. And, of course, I do post on here, and I need to show you this. Ever want to read the full stories of what I'm posting or what I'm showing you in the updates? Well, here it is right here. You can just click on one of these threads. For example, here's Sunday's thread. And I post the uh, title of the story and a link to the story in the thread, and sometimes bits and pieces of data as well. And you can also, this is a really helpful tool, and I'm adding things as I'm finding things. Here's a list of a lot of the data pages that I use on here. The UK, uh, some of the state dashboards, air quality, all listed right here. So this is a really good page for you to check out if you want to view some of the data on your own. Because I often get questioned, can I link this? Can I link this? Well, I do have this right here. And I just added a few more things that I've been using as of lately. Alrighty, moving on now to air quality. So let's see what they show. And given it's cold, I suspect we're going to see some areas with bad air qualities across portions of the United States. Yes, we can see the Mid-Atlantic, and it is snowing in the Mid-Atlantic today. You may hear in the background some people are outside shoveling right now. It is snowing here, it, although the snow is ending. On the West Coast, uh, some bad air qualities, fireplace season there as well. Taking a look at what's going on with Pinellas County, Florida. And we do see here that eh, quite a few sick person calls. Once again today, one, two, three, four, five sick person calls. Six sick person calls. And it seems to be when we do these updates, now that we've added in another place, I'm going to keep looking. I'll see if anywhere else in the United States has a CAD or some sort of a reporting system. But it uh, seems as if there's always a lot of sick person calls. And in case you do not know where to set, this is Pinellas County, Florida, which is uh, St. Petersburg, Tampa Bay area in that general area. I think it's more so St. Petersburg that this uh, covers on here. Philadelphia yesterday had 746 EMS incidents. Currently, right now, there are about 14. It would not surprise me if there are a lot of fall calls, although I'm not seeing many at the moment. Usually, uh, when it's snowing, head injuries, fall calls, you know, people slipping outside, shoveling the snow. And sometimes heart problems will show up as well, because when the snow's heavy, we're getting a fluffy snow today. But when it's heavy, if you did get a lot of snow in your area, please be careful. If you're known to have a heart problem, please uh, use extra caution when shoveling. Uh, if you have a snowblower, be careful with that as well. That can be heavy, too. And if you can have someone help you out, that's a great thing as well. Especially if you're dealing with long COVID. Uh, those with long COVID, be very careful out there shoveling. Take lots of breaks along the way. Chester County, Pennsylvania, uh, quite a few calls here. Respiratory difficulty showing up a few times. Heart problems, as stated, hey, I thought there'd be a lot of heart problem calls today. But if you notice here, we're not seeing any sick person calls. That's an encouraging sign. We will get an overall update from Pennsylvania, hopefully tomorrow, for wastewater. Taking a look at Pennsylvania when it comes to uh, hospital statuses at this time, yeah, there's a lot of yellow showing up here. There's a lot of hospitals dealing with uh, high patient volumes at this time. You can see up here, St. Luke's Bethlehem is dealing with emergency department overcrowding and several of these other hospitals. If I click on them, that's what comes up as well. Here's a, a hospital, Mainline Riddle Memorial Hospital, emergency department overcrowding there as well. New Jersey is not doing too bad today. Uh, we see, well, actually, this has changed. We see not one, not two, three... Yeah, four. Four hospitals dealing with uh, issues at this time. So that's not uh, terrible. It was two earlier, but we'll have to see if later in the day that increases. The peak of diverts I have noticed from last Monday was on or around 5 o'clock. At that point in time, things were just so busy that a lot of hospitals uh, reported uh, patient high patient volumes. Taking a look now at the Walgreens update. Drum roll, please. Good news here. The national COVID positivity rate at Walgreens dropped this week. 15.2% the prior week was 16.6%. Difference of down 1.4%. Total tests, 6,670. The prior week is 7,000. Now, there's a couple things to take note of here. First off, uh, testing will likely drop from here on out. And second off, 
we are likely to probably um, see back to school starting up, back to the office. So there may be a little bit of a reason for the positivity rate to bounce all around a little bit. It may not go straight down. It may bounce, maybe go up a little bit again next week, and then go back down the following week. We'll just have to see, because testing, now that the holiday's over, testing is going to decrease, and there's some of these back to, you know, winter break being over, things going back to normal. That may cause a little continued transmission. And then all eyes down the line become uh, what happens with these future variants. There are a few future variants that are trying to compete to take over XEC. Uh, with less travel, they may not do much. But then again, only time will tell. So let's take a look at a few states here. And for the most part, it is good news. Maine's positivity rate is 22.2%. The prior week was 31.3%. Taking a look at New York State. Now, New York State is still going upward. And you're going to see that in two ways today. First off, New York State, the positivity trend for COVID is 29.6%. The prior week was 24.9%, difference of up 4.8%, total test 270 versus 205, so testing up and positivity rate up. We're also going to take a look at the New York State dashboard in just a little bit, which will show an uh, increase in hospitalizations. Tennessee, 13.8% positivity rate versus 12.2%, difference of up 1.6%, but again, this go around, it's a different reason. We're seeing testing has dropped big time. 297 tests versus 392. West Virginia, the positivity rate is 12.5% versus 23.8%. That's a difference of down 11.3% with the positivity rate being down. So that is some good news. Louisiana positivity trend, 10.9%. The prior week was 3.1%. That is a difference of up 7.9%. Now, taking a look at your next-door neighbor, Texas, and uh, Texas does an awful lot of testing. Well, not a lot compared to several years ago, but for this day and age, testing is uh, still over a 1,000 tests right now at Texas. That is a surprise. 10.5% positivity rate. That is up by 1.6% from 8.9%. Uh, 1,115 tests versus 1,069, so no peak just yet in Texas. Uh, New York State had not peaked. How about what's going on in Nevada? Have you peaked? Well, it looks like you got a problem with testing. You don't do very much. Eight tests versus 11. That's why we see this up and down motion. 12.5% positivity rate versus 9.1%. That is up 3.4%. You're getting a general idea here. There are a lot of states that definitely are peaking. Then there are some states that mm, still are going to need another week or two. Utah. Uh, looks like you might be peaking. 10.2% positivity rate versus 24.3%. That is a big drop. Down by 14.1%. Total test, 49 versus 37. Let's go up to Michigan now. And we're seeing drops up in the Great Lakes. This is a really good sign because the Midwest, the Great Lakes, have been getting hit hardest. 22.2% positivity rate versus 32.9%. Difference of down 10.7%. Total test. 185 versus 158. And remember, folks, this uh, data at Walgreens, this is just a small sampling size. When we look at other data from states, it can show different things. So don't just look at Walgreens, uh, what I'm showing you here, and say, oh, well, Walgreens, everything's fine. No, 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 no. Don't make your local risk assessment just based off of what Walgreens shows you. Let's take a look at some wastewater sites on wastewater scan. In Bridgewater, New Jersey, we see COVID. Now, levels here are not calculated for any of the viruses, but we do see COVID is still rising. RSV may be a sign of a peak. Influenza A is still rising. HMPV is low at this time. Norovirus is still running high. And a quick word about HMPV. Let's finish this uh, wastewater site first. Mpox, no detections. HMPV does appear to be uh, spreading a bit more than normal over in China at this time. And I did hear that there was now a positive case for it in India as well. HMPV has been around for a long time. You may see a few news stories circulating. I was a victim of finding one yesterday and accidentally shared it. Didn't catch myself until several hours later. But uh, I saw MSN and a few other outlets were saying, new COVID outbreak starting over in China. Well, as far as I can see, HMPV is the cause of what is going on in China right now. 
with a few other things, RSV, flu, the regular viruses. So as of right now, nothing terribly concerning. Obviously, it's something we're going to have to continue to watch with that all things uh, being said. But again, the uh, concern in China right now is just the number of HMPV cases. Taking a look at Village Creek in Birmingham, Alabama, and we do see COVID at this time. Looks like uh, maybe it's not rising too much anymore. Again, level's not calculated here either. RSV is still rising. Influenza A, I would have to guess that is relatively high. Influenza B, HMPV, low. Norovirus is just rising slightly at this time. Let's take a look at another wastewater site. Let's go somewhere out into the West Coast, shall we? Let's take a look at Las Vegas. And in Las Vegas, we do see COVID is listed at medium. It does look like maybe it is starting to drop now. RSV is listed at high. Still might be a rise for that. Influenza A is high and still rising. Influenza B is low. HMPV is low. And norovirus looks to be. It has peaked and is starting to drop. No MPOX at this time. All right, let's do a few individual states for COVID from the CDC. And starting off here with Alabama, we can see that levels here are rather high, and the actual state listing is coming up at high in Alabama. Let's take a look on the West Coast now. Uh, California, here it is. And California, when it comes to COVID, overall is low at this time. You do see, though, there are some wastewater sites that are coming up with high levels at this time. Illinois is coming in at very high. Well, there's a reason for that. We're not seeing a lot of uh, wastewater sites reporting. Just a couple in Chicago. So that translates to very high. Look how many are grayed out. Grayed out means that they did not report over the Christmas holiday. Taking a look at Hawaii, if we can. Minimal for COVID in Hawaii at this time. Taking a look at Connecticut. We're just randomly going through some states. We will go through some more states tomorrow. Connecticut is coming in at high at this time. Let's also take a look at some RSV data at this time. We can see nationally RSV did peak, and we can take a look at individual states. And we can see Alabama for RSV at this time is listed as high. Let's go to Delaware. What's going on there? Delaware is listed low at the moment. Let's go out to, how about Kentucky? Kentucky. Well, no data coming in from there. Missouri, we need something from Missouri because we honestly do not get enough data from Missouri. And can we click on Missouri here? There it is. There's Missouri. And unfortunately, no data. I don't understand why some states just won't report. I can understand it was the holidays, but uh, some of these states just constantly do not report. Very high for RSV in Pennsylvania. That's mainly because of the wastewater sites in southeast Pennsylvania. Not a good thing to see there. All right, moving on. We'll take a look at some more of this tomorrow. New York State, 1,253 new positive tests. Taking a look at what's going on with their hospitalizations. And that did go up again, 886. I suspect uh, there may be one final increase tomorrow, and then maybe they will peak. But, hey, I'm just uh, guessing here. Usually uh, third, or excuse me, usually Tuesday is where they would start off the highest of the week. The biggest increase usually comes on a Tuesday. If it comes on another day, that is super concerning. So uh, we'll have to wait and see what the report is for tomorrow. But again, 886 people in the hospital, 88 people in the ICU. Alrighty, folks, that's all I have for today. We'll have another update again tomorrow. If you enjoyed this update, give it a thumbs up. The more people that do that, the more YouTube is going to push this throughout the algorithm. Of course, share this with anyone you know. Leave your comments down below. I will see everyone again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Monday. Thanks for watching.